Tutorial 9, Part 2 Thermal Treatments of Metal and Alloy Thermal Treatment of Metal, Annuling Annuling stands for the process which a material is exposed to an elaborate temperature for an extended time period and then the workpiece or the material piece is slowly cooled and it basically contains of the following three steps first it is heat to the desired temperature second the, ma the metal piece or the material piece is hold at that temperature for some time and then it cools slowly cooled usually to the final temperature which is a uh, room temperature in such process which is at the annulling annulling can relieve the residual stresses within the original workpiece and therefore it can increase the softness and the totality to a cold worked metal workpiece which may be too brittle after too much cold working and basically that means annulling has a reverse effect when it is compared to the co-working during annulling there is a microstructure changes within the metal or the work piece basically the first change will be the recovery recovery means that in the when the temperature is increasing the there is a increase in this location movement and that means there is a there will be a higher annihilation rate of this dislocation during to the increasing temperature and that means if there is to have a lower dislocation density that means the totality of the metal or the material will be increased and the strength will be reduced as contrary to the dislocation strengthening and you can basically see from this picture the first part indicates the internal residue stresses and residue stresses is proportional to the strength and it is inversely proportional to the totality and it is when we consider the grain size in the recovery process they will the grain will start to recovery and the dislocations within the grains will start to annihilate and have a larger movement afterwards the viscolite it will come to the recrystallization process it means that there is a new creation of the new string free remember it is string free which is very very important strain free grains with within the within the original material structure you can see from his this part due to uh increase of temperature and afterwards those small green will be start to growing and they will combine with each other to form a larger grain larger strain free grains Recrystallization temperature. For pure metals, the recrystallization temperature is about around 2.3 times the melting temperature of that metal. But for some alloys, the recrystallization temperature can be as high as 2.7 times the melting temperature of that alloy. And for a higher percentage of whole co work, that means more co work has been done for that piece of metal. That means the metal will have a lower, generally lower recrystallization temperature. And the curve is somehow, or the relation is somehow like this graph. The temperature, recrystallization temperature, has a uh, such relation with the percentage of co work. For a higher temperature, there is a lower time requirement for the recrystallization. 
You want to see for this picture, which I extracted from the tape for, for the textbook. This term is 1000 over temperature. Therefore, here, here we will have a higher temperature at this line. You can see that the recrystallization computed time is generally lesser for a temperature higher than the original point. Quenching. Quenching is the rapid cooling of a workpiece to obtain certain material properties. We can predict the material properties after quenching based on the phase transformation and the TTT diagram. One of our point, interest, point of interest is the quenching and heat treatment of steel. And you can see from the picture here, for different quenching rates, the resultant microstructures within the steel is have a difference. In full annealing, which means that the cooling rate is the lowest, and it will produce a coarse perlite. And it, it involves, usually involves the usage of the firmness to cool the to cool the steel piece for a temperature which is be which is above the UK toy temperature you can see here. For other process such as normalizing, normalizing have a higher cooling rate than full annealing and basically it involves our air cooling to produce a fine perlite. And you may not ask why they will produce a different size of the perlite. You may want to refer to tutorial 8. Basically, for a higher for a higher transformation rate, that means the for a higher for a lower temperature, the new cohesion rate will be higher, but the growth of the newly of the new grains is will have a slower rate. And that means for a higher temperature it will produce a coarse prolite, for a lower temperature it will produce a fine prolite. And for an even for an even lower higher cooling rate, such as oil quench, it will produce some some uh some microstructures such as mountainsides and perlite and water quench is the highest among them and it will produce 100% mountainsides here comes to another example it is also about the forging of a blade why blades miss water or oil quench their red hot blade and the answer is actually related to the phase transformation and the quenching process. Blade is made of steel, and the answer is basically they want to pro produce or create mountainside or fine coralite. You can see from here, these two her, or quench and one water punch. Which is much much more harder than ferrite, which I have already stated in the tutorial eight, and I have explained it in the tutorial eight, and therefore to increase their bait hardness, which is very very important. Okay, so it's still about the forge of the blade, and there's a follow-up question: Why is it not desirable to quench the blade? for too much time and for too little time and you can see here from these two pictures if the quenching time is too little that means there is not enough martensite and fine perlite formed in the blade within the blade and that means the blade is not hardened enough which results a ductile blade 
And if someone use this blade to cut a pig or cut 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 some objects, you can find that the blade actually bends instead of cutting through the object. However, if the blade is crunched too much, there is too much Malazai and the fine perlite, and both of these two micro structures are basically brittle, and the blade will become brittle as well, and you may broke during the sledging process, and you can see from here, the blade just become two pieces. Here is the uh, those pictures. These pictures are actually from the Forging Fire TV show, and which is I would say it is, it's quite good I think, and you can actually learn some applications of those uh, tutorial eight and tutorial nine principles in this TV show. You can actually find that. In industry, we have to develop some tests in order to know how can how shall we crunch in a specific time to obtain a specific hardness. So we develop a test called called uh, the Dominic and Crunch Hex, which involve uh, such picture. The statlet is shown in such picture. The specimen is here which is uh, basically a rod, circular rod, which is heated to a uh, high temperature. And there is a water spray here at the end of this specimen. And you, we can use this to determine the hardability, which is the ability of a steel alloy with a particular top position to transform to modern site for a particular quenching treatment. Hardability curves, carbon contents and the harder alloy elements effects on hardability. If a steel alloy have more carbon ca contact, they will have a higher maximum hardability. As if the more if the content if the carbon content is more, that means there is more martensite can be formed. And martensite is basically a uh, HCP structure of of a uh, of a crystals containing iron atoms and carbon atoms, and that means more carbon atoms, more martensite can be formed. And martensite is basically hardability related to hardability. You can see from this picture, this one has the highest weight percentage of carbon atoms and you can see that the maximum hardability is the highest among these four and actually there is some properties or characteristics in this hardenability curve at zero position the hardness is the highest because it is the cold closest to the water position because of the heat transfer which requires time, the, hard, the hardness you generally decrease when one goes away from the water position, which is basically this curve. Okay, for uh, alloying elements, which will increase the hardability in lower cooling rate, but it does not affect much maximum hardability. And it is because the alloy elements will delay the austenite to perlite and or bignite, bignite reactions. As a result, the austenite is forced to form martensite instead. You can see here, this is different alloying, alloyed steel alloy. And for this one, you can see that at a lower temperature, or a lower cooling rate, which is at a larger distance from the crunched end. And you can see that the curve still have some still is very, very high in terms of hardness, but for some it is generally lower. For those 
carbon or those called those carbon uh, steel alloy have no other alloying elements. More quenching. As the quenching will cause a coarse surface on the workpiece, which is a rapid formation of which is due to the rapid formation of the martensite. And due to heat transfer, inside the cold, inside the steel workpiece, workpiece, it is still hot. The heat transfer rate is not uniform throughout the workpiece. As a result, heat hot part will be will expand and cold part will contract. And a stress will be induced within the workpiece, and which is bad for the workpiece, and the surface mountain side may also crack because of that. Therefore, a mar quenching process will is about keeping the temperature slightly higher than the mountain side formation temperature until the temperature has achieved uniform within the steel workpiece. Then we can quench it, which minimize the internal stresses within the workpiece. Tempering. Tempering means that a metal is heated to some temperature below the critical point, which is usually the oxidizing temperature for steel for a certain period of time. Then or allow it to cool in steel air. It is usually done after quenching. It is basically an increase of the tality with a little decrease in strength. And therefore, in over, overall, it will increase the toughness of the workpiece. Temporary process of alloy steel. In the first in the first part, which is the tempering with a lower tempering temperature. There will be first some formation of the precipitation of very small carbides. And with a higher temperature, higher tempering temperature, there will be a formation of left light, small strip ferrite and cementite. And for an even higher temperature, there will start to form the carbide, carbide formation with alloying elements. And the finally, spherodization, which I have mentioned in tutorial 8. And basically in this process, hardness will first decrease and then increase in the this region. But for the elongation which represents the hardness, it has generally increased threat. The sudden increase of the hardness in this part is mainly due to the formation of those carbides with the alloying elements, which induce a local maximum of the hardness. Precipitation hardening or aging. Some alloys hardness and strength can be enhanced by formation of extremely small, uniformly dispersed particles of a second phase within the original phase. And those small particles of the new phase are called precipitates, which hinders the dislocation movement, which we call it dislocation size, which is mentioned in tutorial 5. And it will also increase the strength. And only some alloys can be subject to such treatment, as the alloy must be able to form this small particle of the new phase, such as aluminium copper alloy. Thermal treatments of metal alloy, precipitation hardening aging. During such process, the alloy is first heated to a T0, which consists of one state only, which is the alpha states, alpha solid states, then it is rapidly quenched to T1, which will form the super saturated solid solution. Such alloy will have a phase diagram such as this, consists of a eutectic point here. And the alpha phase is in this region, you can see that. T0 is this, and T1 is this. And basically it means that it is rapidly quenched to a temperature 
where beta phase will start to form. But as T1 is set to a very very low temperature, as a result, the nucleation rate is actually the very very low. The transformation, the overall transformation rate is very very low, and that means we can basically regard that the beta phase cannot be formed as the temperature T2 is very very low, and we consider such process or such solid such solid after the rapid quantum chain to be in the state of super saturated solid solution just as those super saturated water which is the temperature is well below zero but the water has happened to be changed to ice you can just think like this then the work piece is here to t2 which have a higher temperature compared to t1 but it is still still below the eutectic temperature or below the TCO to speed up atom diffusion and to, which allows the formation of beta precipitates within the web piece. And therefore, for a higher T2, the agent speed will be higher or faster. And this is the temperature time curve. And you can see that T1 to CCO and then quenched to T1 and then reheat to T2. Microstructure change during aging. This is a picture I borrowed from the or I extract from the book. It explained the microstructure change during the aging process of such kind of alloys. Just after quenching, atoms, which is CEO in this picture, and those are blue atoms, heaven has the time to diffuse to form a second phase, which is this region. So therefore, we have to increase it back to some temperature about the quenching temperature. So therefore, after precipitate heat treatment for enough time, there is a coherent form, second phase precipitate form marked by my pen, and it is the picture B formed, which induces a compressive or tensile strain shown in the picture here, which is which hinders the dislocation movement, and by the dislocational strengthening, which will increase the strength of the materials which is also mentioned in tutorial 5. But if the aging time is too much, there will be an incoherent second phase specificity formed, which will actually, in case, decrease the strength of material, which is here. This one is coherent, and this is picture, picture C. Here comes an example. Both steel and CuAl alloy copper and aluminum alloy are heated to just above their eutectoid temperature uh, basically T1 steel and T1 aluminum respectively but not reaching their melting point then both of them is quick, quenched quickly with a very high heat transfer rate and the temperature drop is dropped to T2 steel and T2 aluminum respectively finally they are reheated to some temperature TP steel and TP aluminium just below T1 steel for steel and T1 aluminium for copper aluminium alloy. Sketch the U stress versus time curve for these two metal alloys. Start with a uh, T2 steel and T2 aluminium at for is set to be T equal to zero. Let's go for steel first. Steel will generally have such curve. And here is just after quenching. And you can see that U stress is decreasing with respect to time. And it is because the final heat treatment step is exactly the steps for the tempering of steel. And such is not annulling, as annulling requires us to mention the cooling after it is raised to TC T3 steel. 
and tampering process reduce the strength of steel. Just after the rapid quenching, the metal or the material or the seal will be full of button size. But if you tampering it again, the button size will start to be softened and change to other kinds of and change to other kinds of metal structures within the steels which have a lower strength, such as the carbide precipitations or spherodizations, which will generally decrease the strength of steel. But for copper and aluminum alloy, the diff there is some difference. The real stress will reach a maximum after quenching in the annealing process, and then it will decrease with regard to long enough time. As the copper aluminum alloy is first heated to points above effective temperature, at this temperature, the material is consists of only one phase only, and which is a homogeneous solid solution. Then it is quenched quickly to form a supersaturated solution. When it is raised back to T3 aluminium, which will allow the second small second phase precipitation start to form and raise the strength of the alloy, which is exactly the aging process. However, after a long enough time at the T3 aluminium, which is the temp which is the tempering time or tempering temperature, the second phase precipitation will gone will be gone too large and start decreasing the strength of the alloy, which is the coherent precipitation. And it marks the steps for the such alloy mentions in question statement is exactly the steps for precipitation hardening of such alloy. And this will conclude our nine main tutorial video for Macan 2410 Material 1. And if you have watched all of them and you have you can understand what I've just said, I will give you a congratulations. And I think now you should have a basic understanding of concepts talk in Macan 2410, which is material, material 1, and it is mainly about metal and some basic idea or basic concepts about the materials. The materials about all the mechanics about ceramics and uh, and uh, polymers will be talked in the material 2, which I have I haven't learned yet, actually. So, as I just mentioned, or as I mentioned in the, in the introduction, MACK 2410 requires the students to have a good understanding of the concept. The calculation is not that difficult, as I would say, compared to something like fluid mechanics and solid mechanics, uh, those uh, nearest stroke equations and those deflection of beams, those. Uh, Integration for four times, which is quite troublesome, I would say. Uh, so I would say the understanding of the concept is the most important if you try to if you want to obtain a high grade in this course. So um, in later in later time, we may add some extra tutorial videos for Macan two four one zero, which are some supplementary knowledge for Macan two four one zero, such as some dimensional analysis, which is about the units. Excel graph plotting, which is generally about the plotting of the Excel graph and which can help you in the lab, doing those lab reports, etc. And it still depends on our ability. And if you have found any errors is in these nine tutorials, there should be some errors, I, I, I think. And please don't hesitate to tell us because again, this is my first time doing such kind of tutorial videos. So if there is any errors, 
I will I I will get and I will try to change it. And I will say that's it and goodbye.